What is a differential equation? A differential equation is any equation that has sort of this derivative expression or the second derivative expression in it. And when it's saying solve the following differential equations, essentially what it means is we want to find the original function. So the y equals. And it usually means explicitly, where possible. Not always, but a lot of times. So if we wanted to find the original function of this dy by dx of 4x minus 4, how would we do it? Well, by now we understand, according to our first, uh, our fundamental theorem of calculus, that the integral of a derivative is the function itself, right? So if we wanted to get rid of this dy by dx and take the integral of it, we'd be left with y, right? Because it would just undo it and we'd essentially get the original function. So in order to do that, we need to take the integral of the other side as well, right? Because whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So the integral of 4x is, what is it? 4 times 1 half x squared minus 4x plus c. We always got to remember our plus c if it's an indefinite integral. Okay, and then let's just simplify. So it's going to be 2x squared minus 4x plus c. There we go. So that is a solution to this differential equation. Now, there are actually infinite number of solutions because the c can be any value, but this is the family of solutions that work. Next, two, uh, sine 2x. Two so again, we can just take the integral of both sides. dy by dx, we're going to end up getting y. And the integral of sine 2x is negative 1 half cos 2x. And if you don't understand why that is, you can use um, a little bit of substitution for, for 2x or something like that. But this is what it comes out to, plus c, right? Now, this question gives us another thing here. It tells us where y equal or y at 0 is equal to 0. So that means in our function, in our original function, in our solution, I should say, to the differential equation, it's telling us that the zero value is zero. So what we can do is we can plug that in to find specifically the c value that we're dealing with, right? So for example, if I make y equal to zero and I make x equal to zero, I can solve for c. So cos of zero is one, right? So I end up with this negative one half and move it to the other side. So one half is c. c is one half. So the exact differential equation ends up being negative one half cos two x plus one half. That is the exact differential equation, solution to the differential equation up here based on this condition. So any conditions you're given always have the ability to basically tell us uh, the exact one. We don't need the C anymore in the end. Now this next question might look simple, but I think it's a little more complicated than you might think. If we try to apply what we did before, just taking the integral of both sides, right? It's not going to be as easy because think about it. Our integral has to be taken with respect to x, right? X is our variable here in the in the differential. That's that's you know what it's in terms of. There is no x over here, so it gets a little bit more complicated, right? One way of visualizing visualizing this problem a little bit differently is let's maybe rearrange this a bit. Let's bring the y to the other side. So I'm just going to rearrange it. I'm going to make it 1 over y times dy by dx equals negative 2. So all I did is just divided both sides by y, right? Now, does this look familiar at all? You might be a bit rusty at our implicit differentiation. But remember, if we ever have a function like this, x plus y equals 2, for example, and I wanted to take the derivative of that, so I wanted to take d by dx, for example, d by dx of both sides, I can do that implicitly, right? I can take the derivative of x is just 1, but the derivative of y is 1 times dy by dx, right, according to the chain rule, and the derivative of 2 is just 0. So, of course, then I could rearrange my equation. But the point is, the derivative, when we're taking something implicitly, the derivative always has this dy by dx. 
So essentially what we're doing, we have to, we have to go like this. We can take the integral of both sides like this now, right? And this makes more sense because this looks like this, right? So it's basically what's the integral of one over y. And the integral of one over y, you may remember, is ln y, right? It's actually the absolute value of y. Um, and then the dy by dx goes away because that's the, you know, that's the part of the chain rule that came out of it. On the right side, the integral of negative 2 is negative 2x. And then we, of course, have our plus c. So here we go. We have our, our integral, and we did that sort of like implicitly, but it was like the opposite of implicit um, differentiation. It was implicit integration, sort of. Um, and that's, that's often what differential equations actually are. Um, but anyways, now we want to isolate for y, because usually when it says solve, we usually want the y equals. We want the explicit differential solution. So remember what ln y means. It means e to the power of something gives us y. It's e to the power of this gives us y. In other words, y equals e to the power of negative 2x plus c. So this is actually our solution. Now, there is one thing that you can do to make this a little bit simpler, and it's just convention, but we often like to do this. See how there's this plus c in the exponent? What we can do, we can realize that really this, what this means is it's like e to the negative 2x times e to the c, right? So you could separate it, right, using our laws of um, exponents. But what e to the c is, e to the c is just a constant, right? Because e is just our number 2.7, blah, blah, blah. c is just some, any number, a constant. So what we can actually do is we can just represent this whole e to the c part as one constant and put it in front. So in other words, we just replace the, the c in the exponent with a c in front. Like that. Right? Because it doesn't matter that e is part of that, it's just going to be a number right? So this is just a simpler form that we often like using instead of this. Th these are technically equivalent to each other, right? The c's are going to be different values in both cases, but, you know, essentially it's the same thing. This is just simpler to work with because we don't have this really complicated exponent. Now, the next question asks us the same question, but it's telling us y at zero is one half. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is we can find the value of c that plugs in um, to, to make the exact solution to this differential equation. So, for example, um, here we know dy by dx. We know our y is equal to, what was it, c e to the negative 2x. Oh, sorry, c times e, yeah, to the negative 2x. And we know y at 0 is 1 half. So we know 1 half equals c e to the negative 2 times 0. So e to the power of 0 is just going to be 1, so that tells us that our c is 1 half. In other words, our final equation is y equals 1 half e to the negative 2x. There we go. And again, that's much simpler. Um, if, if we were to keep the c in the exponent, first of all, it would be more difficult to solve for c, right? Um, but second of all, it's just like this is just a simpler form. So we usually stick with that because of convention. Now, what about if we have a function that's sort of implicit like this? And let's think about what this means. This is basically saying dy by dx. So in other words, a function is changing, and this is the relationship it's changing. x to the cubed, y to the squared. It's a complicated relationship. So we need to find, we want to find, our goal is to find y, right? Find our solution to this differential equation. Now, how are we going to do that? It's very implicit. Like, are we going to do implicit differentiation or implicit integration? Sort of. But there's actually a simpler way to do it. And it's called separation of variables. You may be able to guess what separation of variables actually means. It means put all the y's on one side, put all the x's on the other side, and then do your integration. So, this is, the, this is one case where we're able to treat this differential, this dy by dx, we're able to treat them as sort of like dy and dx as two separate variables almost. So what I mean by that is we can we can sort of move, we can basically, in order to get the x's on this side, for example, we can just divide both sides by y squared to get the y on the other side. So we're going to end up with 1 over y squared dy by dx equals 4x cubed. 
But then what I can do is I can sort of multiply both sides by dx in order to get the dx to be on the other side. So what that's going to look like is going to look like this. 1 over y squared dy equals 4x cubed dx. Do you see that? Do you see how now there's only y's on this side, only x's on the other side? And I know I've said before you can't really treat this as a fraction, but this is a case where you can sort of treat them as separate variables, right? So we have now separated the variables. Now we can actually integrate both sides. Right? So now we can do the integral of this side and the integral of that side. And it looks really nice because we're used to having this dy here. Um, and we don't need to do anything fancy with it, right? Because this is saying take the left side in terms of y, right? So we don't really need to do any fancy implicit anything, right? It's pretty straightforward. Um, just off to the side, I'm going to do the integral of 1 over y squared. 1 over y squared is equal to y to the negative 2, right? So if we were to integrate that, uh, dy. It's going to go up by 1, so it's going to get to negative 1, y to the negative 1, and it's going to multiply that in front. So you're going to end up with negative y to the negative 1, right? I just want to put that off to the side because it can be a little bit confusing. So what that ends up being is negative y to the negative 1, right, or one, negative 1 over y, equals the integral of this side, which is a little more straightforward. It's going to be 4 over 4, right, or just x to the power of 4. And we cannot forget, because it's an indefinite integral, we cannot forget our plus c, right? Now, I don't need to put a plus c. I mean, we did take the integral of both sides, but I don't really need to put a plus c for both sides, right? Because, you know, you could just move them around and combine them into one c. So it doesn't really matter. Let's just leave it as one c. But now I want to isolate for y, right? I want an equation y equals. That's usually what I mean when we say solve a differential equation or find a solution to a differential equation. So it's this is 1 over y equals x to the fourth plus c. And now in order to solve for y, I mean, I could just multiply both sides by y, divide both sides by x to the fourth plus c. Um, in other words, just swap this with this, right? So y is going to end up as, you can do the, the algebra yourself if you're not comfortable with doing that many steps at once. Uh, x plus 4, or x to the 4 plus c, okay? Um, now, in the question, it tells us that y at 1 equals negative 1 half. So we can actually find the exact answer, the particular um, solution, which um, we can solve for c, basically. So y is negative 1 half when x equals 1, right? Um, I mean, I can just solve that by inspection, right? Just looking at that, right? To make this match up, the denominator down here has to be 2, so c has to be 1. You can solve it algebraically, too, if you want. Um, but just by inspection, you can see that c has to be 1. So the answer to this, the exact, the particular solution to this differential equation is 1 over x to the 4 plus 1. There we go. So I want you to try the next one yourself. Uh, remember what we did? We separated the variables first, and then, um, then we integrated and isolated y. So give this one a try yourself. Pause the video and try it. So here is my solution. After taking the integral, I end up getting this y squared, so I have to take the square root of both sides. When we do that, we have to remember that there is a positive and a negative branch. Then, to plug in y equals or uh, y at 3 is equal to 4, um, we end up solving for c equals 4. And you realize when you square both sides here, that plus minus doesn't really matter anymore because, I mean, we're only looking at the positive case here. So you end up getting c is 4. Now, in my final equation, you might, have, you might see that I only wrote one solution and not the negative solution. Why is that? Well, let's think about it. Does it make sense to show the negative solution? Does it, does it make sense that the negative solution would fit? Well, remember, it's telling us that y at 3 is equal to 4, right? It's basically telling us that 3, 4 is a point on this solution. Is that possible if, if this, um, this y is positive? Is it pos uh, possible for this to be the negative root? No, right? Because anything under here will be positive, so this has got to be positive in order for this to be 4. So the only answer that makes sense is this one. The negative root does not make sense. Okay, you're welcome to try this next question yourself if you want, um, but we're going to go through it because it is, does introduce a few new um, things. 
Remember, this is the notation right here, d squared y by dx squared, is the fancy notation for the second derivative, right? It's the Leibniz notation for the second derivative. So all it really means is y double prime, okay? So if that's the case, we can basically apply the same thing we have. Well, first of all, it's already separated, right? We, I mean, we, it's not separated, but we already have that, um, the dy by dx, the differential on the left side. So we can just take the integral to get rid of that second derivative. And when we take the integral, we're going to be left with the first derivative, right? So what it's going to end up looking like is dy by dx, dy by dx, because we're now in the first derivative zone, equals x squared plus x plus c, right? So we might be tempted to go to the, you know, take the integral again, blah, blah, blah. We're going to end up with um, just our y, but... Let's look at our conditions. We actually have two conditions here. And that's because each time we take the integral, we're going to end up with a new c. So before we actually go to the, the you know, take the integral again, let's, let's find out what this c is, right? So we can plug in y prime at 0. Another way of saying y prime is dy by dx, right? This is just dy by dx. So dy by dx at 0, the derivative at 0, is equal to negative 1. So this is going to be negative 1 equals c, right? Because this part's going to go away. It's going to be 0. This part's going to be 0, and we're just left with c. So c equals negative 1. So this is our first derivative solution to the differential equation, x squared plus x minus 1. Now we can take the integral again. And by the way, you might notice there's no dx over here. Um, and I've been sort of loose about that when we have a dx in the denominator over here. It's essentially like we're we're taking the derivative, the integral of both sides with respect to x. So really, there's what you don't see here is a dx and a dx here, which you don't really see. And, um, because essentially what happens is these de dx's end up canceling out, and then you end up just the differential of y, which is just y. Um, but anyways... Uh, so this side just ends up being y, right? Because the integral of the derivative, it's the function itself, y. Um, and this is going to end up being 1 third x cubed plus 1 half x minus x plus c. Right? That's just the integral. And that's the indefinite integral. And then we know that y at 0 equals 3. So let's just plug in 3 equals, and these are all zeros. So that, that equals c. So c equals 3. So our final answer is y equals 1 third x cubed plus 1 half x minus x plus 3. And that is our solution to that differential equation. Okay, so sometimes when there's a second derivative, you need to find two integrals. And each integral is going to have its own um, condition in order for you to find the exact answer. So what I want you to do now is try these three questions yourself. Pause the video, try them yourself. Uh, when you unpause, I will just reveal the solutions, okay? So we're not going to go through each one of these. I don't really want you to try them yourself. Okay, pause here. Unpause when you're ready. So let me start off by saying example six. Hopefully you tried it, but maybe you got stuck at these integrals. And in fact, these integrals are tricky integrals to do. In fact, we need to use something called integration by parts. which is a new method of integration, which we're actually not going to cover in this course. Um, so if you're interested in it, feel free to look it up, but it's basically, it undoes the product rule, right? So you can see that sort of like there's a product rule st thing sort of happening here. Um, integration by parts is a way to undo that, but again, not for this course. So feel free to use Wolfram Alpha to evaluate that, um, but in terms of algebraically calculating it, do not worry about that. Example four and five are possible though. So, um, same deal right here, right? We take the integral of both sides uh, for 4. You end up with, using some logarithmic integration, you end up with this. And you end up with this sort of ugliness once you try to isolate for y. One thing to keep in mind, though, is remember from before. Um, if you have e to the exponent of ln of something, basically the e and the ln undo each other. So you end up with just this function. And also, we have e to the power of c. So in, in other words, you could, you could rewrite this equation. Uh, you can rewrite this equation as 
e to the ln x squared plus 1 times e to the c, right? This part evaluates to x squared plus 1, and this part evaluates to just a constant, right? So we can just leave it as this, and that is your simplified answer. And then for this one, just remember y prime stands for dy by dx, so we can, you know, separate the variables and do the, do the same thing over here we can do for um, all the previous ones. And there you go.